Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. Today's game up on the tabletop, Gulp. Gulp is for two players, takes about 15 to 30 minutes to play, and is for ages eight and up. In Gulp, it's a fish eat fish world, and you're going to get one set of tiles that is laid down in a seven by seven grid, and your opponent will get the other set of tiles. There's a light blue and a dark blue. You'll be utilizing your tiles on your turn to move around the board and eat certain types of fish. Now, it doesn't matter which ones you eat, provided that you're the bigger fish, and certain fish have certain rules as to how far they can move, what they can eat, what they cannot eat, but in general, you're just trying to gather as many tiles and as many piles as possible and make sure that your fish is on the top portion of that tile stack. Of course, your opponents can eat larger tile stacks provided that their fish are bigger than yours or they meet certain rules requirements. But nevertheless, once nobody can move anymore, you're going to tally up the score of the game and whoever has the most tiles in their tile stacks altogether is the winner of the game, Gulp, the fishy little eating style tableau management or tile placement game. Okay, let's go ahead and take a look down below at what you get in the game and then how to play it. So here we have the game gulp and it's all set up for two players and as you can see it's a seven by seven grid in which one player will get the lighter color and the other player will get the darker color. After you've randomly shuffled them and dealt them out in this order choose a player to go first and all you do on your turn is simply move one of your tiles to any other tile whether it's yours or not. In order to move though you must eat something and eating is pretty simple. There are three levels level three two one and then zero in which case when you eat the main rule is you have to eat your level or level lower. So for instance, if you're a parrot fish, which is I believe level two, it can eat anything that is level one or zero, including level two. So basically you can go ahead and move yours and you can also eat your own stuff. But remember you may or may not want to do that because at the end of the game, you're going to want to have as many big fish as you can out there eating. If of course there are blank spaces around you, you can't move into those spaces. The only way you can move is if you eat, but there are a few exceptions. The first exception is flying fish can go vertically, vertically or horizontally as many spaces, regardless of if there's empty spaces and they can go ahead and eat anything their level or lower and parrot fish, the these guys over here are able to eat coral. Nothing can eat coral but the uh, parrot fish, but everything can eat kelp. On your turn, if you can't make a move, your opponent gets to make as many moves as possible until neither player can simply make any moves, in which case you're going to count the stacks left over remaining on the board, and your stack is going to be based off of whatever the top fish is. If that top fish is dark blue, dark blue is going to score that stack. If the top fish is going to be light blue, light blue will score that stack, and you score points based on the number of tiles in each of the stacks collectively, and whoever has the most points in the game is the winner. Let's take you down below, I'll show you a couple rounds of play, and then after that, I'll tell you what I think of the game. Gulp! Okay, so it's set up and we're ready to play the game. We'll start with the light blue player and we will just have them go and then the dark blue and so on and so forth. And just to give you an idea of how the game plays in this specific scenario, which of course it's always going to be different every single time you play it as far as how the board looks, but for the most part the game plays the same. Now to begin, we'll go ahead and start with light blue and he can simply move one space, either up, down, left, or right. You cannot move vertically, so you can't you can't do this. So I can go ahead and go there because this is a level one and this is also a level one. So it's basically eating that level one, making the stack a little bigger. And this is now light blue stack. Light blue is now done and now it's dark blue's turn and dark blue can simply go ahead and say, oh, I'm going to go ahead and eat those sardines that ate mine. And now that stack is the dark blues and he's going to score three points at the end of the game because he's got three of the tiles there. Now back to the light blue once again, light blue notices that uh, things are happening that are not in his favor. So he's going to start moving his shark over and that is going to score him two points at the end of the game, hopefully if all works out. And now once again, we'll move on the dark blue is going to go over here and eat these sardines eating of course your own isn't a bad idea or a bad option but it's probably always better to eat your opponent's stuff uh, you see this flying fish here this is a rule breaker for instance uh, which I will show you in a second but we'll first go ahead and have this guy just go ahead and eat here and now we're gonna go take you to the dark blue this guy can actually go across empty spaces where normally you couldn't do this but in this case you can and it has to be of course the same level or lower he can fly across spaces like this and that is going to score him that point hopefully at the end of the game and we're just gonna keep on going just like so it's pretty simple pretty straightforward as how it works let's go ahead and have this shark come in here and start eating more stuff and uh, maybe if we want we can take these guys here and put them here now this will actually protect this as long as no flying fish get at them which is pretty useful but as you can see that's basically how the game works and the game's going to basically continue this way as players start scoring things remember parrotfish can also eat these nothing else can eat these but the parrotfish can 
It's a pretty useful aspect. Uh, this guy probably wants to go here. He can, you can choose to leave him alone and move this one instead now because he's eating his own, which is kind of dangerous, but we'll go ahead and fly with it for now. And uh, this parrotfish is just going to keep going and so on and so forth. And as you can see, that's basically how the game works. The only exceptions, like I said previously, is the flying fish can move across the board in empty spaces, provided he can eat. And uh, the shark can pretty much eat anything it wants other than coral, which can only be eaten by these fish here. Eventually, at the end of the game, we'll just go ahead and give you an idea of what the end of a game was going to look like. Uh, something maybe like this. We'll move around a couple things here and uh, try and try and follow it e e as it should be done. And boo 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 boo. And that's probably how it's going to look. And as you can see now, this is if this were the end of the game here, you're basically not able to move anymore. There's no flying fish that can move. There's no spaces adjacent to each other. So you're going to score. And there's going to be certain scoring methods. Uh, there's a certain scoring method. It's going to be these four are going to be for dark blue. And these five are for light blue. So you'll take all these and you'll add them up. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 6, 27, 28, 29 points is going to be for light blue. And then you would add up these as well. And whoever has the most out of the light blue versus dark blue is the winner. And uh, if you want to play again, just simply shuffle them all up, face down, flip them all, uh, and then flip them all over and start a new game of gulp. Okay, I think you get the idea of how it works. Let's come up and talk about it. So what do I think about Gulp and it's a fish eat fish world? Well, first of all, it's a two player game. For some of those of you not interested in two player games, probably not for you. Additionally, it's got a fish theme and I love fish. I love fishing themes. One of my favorite themes that I don't really often see in games. So that's a big plus. The game is also an abstract strategy game. Of course, you're gonna be moving back and forth two players in a battle of wills and a battle of wits as to who's gonna move what piece first and in what way blocking other characters or fish out of reach from other fish. And there's going to be a lot of decision making in this game. The seven by seven grid that is constantly changing every game is definitely gonna give you quite a bit of replayability, but it's still going to be the same game each time you play it. There's no new rules or variations to the game. It's a simple abstract game in which you're moving three is equal to three and three also can eat anything under that, but ones can't eat twos, so on and so forth, as well as a couple interesting rules. The, the, the flying fish can fly across the board, which is actually rather interesting and unique and does come in handy on certain occasions. And then of course, the parrotfish eating the coral. Those things usually are blockers, but when you can utilize your parrotfish to get through, that might help your even bigger fish eat more of the competition. It's basically like Odell Lake meets a board game. It's quick, it's simple, it's fun, it is a strategy game, and it is a travel game. It's not something that I'd probably take out for, you know, a deep strategy night, but in between games it's gonna work as a gateway game, as a filler game, and some something that is going to be meeting that abstract strategy needs of mine when I want to sit down and just play one-on-one -on -one with my wife or maybe one of the kids or even the kids playing this game. It's very, very simple. It's a game that you can teach probably about five minutes and players are just going to go ahead and get into it and they're going to enjoy this game. Otherwise, artwork is solid. The components are good. What do you expect? They're, they're basically tiles. They're thick. They're nice. This looks like it is a fully done version of the game and I am uh, very impressed with it. If it's not, then... Uh, it'll only get better from there, but otherwise I'm, I'm very happy with what is presented to me so far. It's a really enjoyable game. Those of you who are interested in two-player strategy slash abstract games are gonna dig this little title. Just don't expect it to go anywhere more than what I'm explaining as it is right now. This is what the game is. If you like the sound of it, you're going to enjoy this game. Go ahead and take a look down below to take a look at Gulp, and if that interests you, go ahead and choose to back it on Kickstarter starting, I believe, today. But if it's not today, that means it was yesterday or at some time in the past, because I'm, I'm uploading this on, on the day of the campaign. I, th I, th I think you get that. Okay, anyway, thanks for watching. Take a look down below and outro. All right, guys, thanks for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. If you like this game, go ahead and check out it down below in the description below currently on Kickstarter. Gulp, a fishy, friendly game for two players. Abstract strategy for those of you interested in that style, as well as taking a look at our website, unfilteredgamer.com. We're giving away the game dogs, but only for a very short period of time, as well as our live streams at Unfiltered Gamer. 
everydaygamer.com. Go on our Facebook from there or just simply the Facebook page every Wednesday at 7.30 p.m. PST. Where we'll be giving away tons of games. We've got sponsorships going on this week. We owe, I'm almost guaranteed for our sponsors this Wednesday for four games. And then uh, next week we'll also have one as well. So that'll be fun. Giving away a lot of fun little games there. As well as taking a look at our friends everythingboardgames.com. I'm the Giveaway Geek. If you like those guys, they do a ton of giveaways, as well as blog posts, even more than my own site, but not giveaways anymore. I think I'm going to be beating them if I keep on doing as many as I'm doing now. Nevertheless, it's been a pleasure serving you, showing you this game, and uh, I highly recommend taking a look at it. All right? Well, as always, guys, I look forward to swimming away with you 